Let's go ahead and answer this question. You know, most real estate investors do marketing that is quantifiable, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, I spend and invest X number of dollars on a direct mail campaign and I get so much percentage response. I know what my conversion is. So I know I spent X number of dollars to acquire a customer uh, on that direct mail campaign. Um, I'm doing, you know, uh, outbound calling. I'm doing texting. I'm doing Facebook ads that are paid ads. So all these things that I pay money out. Well, let me just say, first of all, Mr. and Miss real estate investor that's listening here to the podcast, if you're not measuring what your cost per lead and your cost per conversion are, then we need to have another conversation yeah. about that. Right? So, most know what am I getting for what I'm investing. So before we really start drilling down on the different ways that you can use social media to really bring more money to the bottom line as a real estate investor, when it comes to content marketing, how can we quantify and measure its results? Quanti that's an incredibly good question. Quantifying content, uh, it, it, it it's all dependent on the way you look at marketing. There's there's hundreds of silos inside of marketing, right? You you mentioned four or five of them. There's direct mail, text blasting, cold calling, uh, uh, voicemails, and, and there's just so many different ways, to, methods to market. And yes, you absolutely should be tracking every single one of those marketing channels. When it comes to content marketing, it's a totally different ballgame. This is where understanding differences is really key. Uh, one of my good buddies, uh, Trevor Mock, he uh, is the CEO of Carrot. If you guys are familiar with Investor Carrot, I've never never met a single investor that doesn't know of Carrot that either doesn't have a Carrot site, has had one, or knows of them. So hopefully, hey, you do. I got I got um, three of them right now. That yeah, I've three of them been for fifteen years. Yeah. So it's, yeah, exactly. They're they're really really good websites to have as a real estate investor. Um, and I got some tips on those if we want to dive into it. But uh, I was actually on his podcast, the Carrot Cast. And we were talking about this topic of content marketing and the way he analogizes it is, is really, really good. So it's hunting versus fishing. So when you're putting out direct mail, direct mail is kind of like a little bit of a borderline one, but especially text blasting, cold calling. Think of it this way. You are literally hunting for these leads because how many times have you been hung up on or gotten a text you know, response or absolutely no response, but I got a response saying, take me off your effing list and stuff like that. Like that, that's all because you're hitting people that you're just crossing your fingers and hoping that they're motivated, right? You, you're, you're hoping that you're blanketing enough to actually get a lead, somebody that wants to sell a house that's motivated to sell a house. Now I'm not saying don't do that. You absolutely need to do that. That works really, really well for a lot of people. We're talking about the differences between that and what content is though content on the other hand is fishy you can put take for instance if you put a piece of content out you put a video on your website you put a video on facebook about why you should uh, sell your house to a, a, a wholesaler a real estate investor or that what is the difference between a real estate agent and a real estate investor and you put a video out of that what you're basically doing is putting a hook in the water to catch a fish and the more hooks you put in you don't have to go tend to those. Unlike hunting, you have to literally be, you know, walking around and looking for the deal. Whereas with this, you're actually putting these hooks and these lines in the water. And then if one bites, well, you can run over to it and reel it in. And that's the difference there. And, and then you have this stream. So you have these hooks in the stream and fish leads, motivated leads are going by and catching on to your hooks, right? And so then you can bring those in. And that's the difference. And the ultimate, ultimate goal for this is those those fish that are hooking onto it, they're hungry. They are hungry, which means they're what? Motivated. And so with content marketing, it's you have to think of the motivation. People are sitting at home in bed, maybe a loved one just passed away, they inherited the property, and they're sitting at home at two o'clock in the morning, it's keeping them up and they're like, I just got this, this, I just got this house and I inherited it. What in the world am I gonna do with this thing? And it's not like now you're sending a text blast and that person gets that text, that text, you know, that text campaign. And then the next morning they check in their, in their mailbox. And then there's a, a, a yellow card from you that says, Hey, sell your house to me. No, now they're going to go to Google and they're going to type in what to do with my inherited house. And if you don't have content out there, 
that's timeless and relevant to their search, they are not going to find you in their motivated stage. Now, here's the important thing is that when they do go looking, they are highly motivated. You better be ready to capture that lead and get back in contact with them immediately, as soon as possible, especially during the day. If they go to your website and then they call a number off your website, you better be answering that live or they're just gonna move to the next person. Because the unfortunate thing about what we do as you know, real estate investors, whether you're a wholesaler, you're acquiring deals, you're doing your own motivated seller marketing, is that it's kind of a commodity. Like we're, we're really, wholesalers are a dime a dozen guys. Like people know that they can just move on to the next person. And a lot of times sellers are smart now, they're just gonna look for the person that's given them, give them the highest offer. And that's what they're gonna move forward with. And so you taking that live call is gonna be so crucial to the efforts that you're doing with your content. And so all that to say is there's a difference. Advertising, I would throw into the category of, you know, that would be text blasting and cold calling. It's you doing interruption marketing to disrupt the pattern of somebody, you know, scrolling through Facebook, oh, an ad, or on their phone, oh, I just got a text blast from such and such wholesaler as opposed to them having the motivation going to the web and searching for a, pro, a, a, a solution to their problem. So those are the key differences. So all that to say, Jay, is it's not one or the other, it's both. You have to absolutely do both of these strategies and that's when you're ultimately gonna come on top. So complementing having content marketing along with straight up advertising, that's gonna be the perfect success formula if you're gonna do motivated seller marketing. So hopefully I explained that well. So tell me if I summarize correctly what we just said or what you just said, direct response marketing, i.e. direct mail, outbound calling, um, texting, Facebook ads, that is uh, direct marketing, hoping that someone's going to see my message that just happens to come across it. In con or in addition to that, as you say, not in contrast, but we need both kinds. Am I, have I got this correct? And that is content marketing is for the purpose of being easy to be found when somebody is looking for us. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's, that, that's totally true. So I'll give you an example um, in, outside of the real estate world is, you know, we were, uh, we've been, you know, you guys have seen these Pelotons everywhere. They're very, very popular now. Those, those stationary bikes that are, they have incredible technology inside of them. And we've been thinking about getting them for a long time. Now, if Peloton decided six months ago to hit us with ads and maybe even send us cold calls or, uh, emails that they're marketing to us or whatnot. We weren't motivated at that point because we were going to the gym. I have a personal trainer and so I don't need it, right? I'm not motivated to have a Peloton. Well, two weeks ago, we were in Colorado and we stopped at a, a little mall and there was a Peloton shop there. And so I walked in, I'm like, you know what? I really like these things. I got to try it out. And I'm like, you know what? I'm probably gonna try to do this. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get one now. I'm motivated to actually get one. So I gave, I gave, uh, or the, the lady gave me her card cause they want to get credit for the store or whatever. Um, if I purchased the Peloton, I said, you know what, obviously I'm not gonna purchase it here. I'm, at, I'm from out of town. And so I'll like, just follow up with me. I'll get back with you. Well, sure enough, two days later, she follows up with me. She knows I'm motivated. She knows that I have interest in this Peloton and this bike and she's got to hit me while it's hot. And so she follows up with me at that point and says, Hey, are you still interested? Well then. You know, and I didn't respond at that point because it was on a Sunday. But then throughout the rest of the afternoon, I start getting hit with ads from Peloton. Go figure, right? Like I started getting Facebook ads. I started, I went to Google and I got, you know, uh, some, some PPC ads. And that that's when they decided to hit me. Well, it's smart on their part because now I'm motivated. So then what do I do? I go to the website and double check like, hey, is, is this confirmation that I actually want a Peloton? <laughs> and so I started digging in a little bit, getting into the reviews and stuff like that. And then finally, sure enough, I'm like, all right, this is something I want to do. Well, they had a lot of content out there. They had a lot of training videos and how to videos. Here's how you actually operate your Peloton. And here's the things you need to know before getting into it. Here's the shoes you want to use if you are going to, you know, actually be serious about this. And so I found, I did all my fact, fact found fact finding and discovered, all right, I'm ready for this. And so I went and purchased one and, you know, obviously gave the store credit or whatever. So I was in my motivated state at that point, not six months ago when if they did hit me, I, it would have been like, all right, delete email 
or I just don't care. I'm not going to be interested in these, in these ads that I'm getting hit with on Facebook because I'm just not in the motivation for it. So it's all about the state of mind and the situation where somebody is. And that's why people tell you all the time, follow up, follow up, follow up. You know, a really big thing is follow up or hitting them with, you know, six different mail campaigns over the course of a year or whatever. The reason is, is because you're hoping to hit them when they're motivated. That's when you're hoping to hit them is, is just by blanketing them that way. But with content, it's, you know, you're, you have stuff out there already. It's preactive. And when they're ready and they're motivated, they're going to go search for it. If they find your stuff, you have a lot more of a credibility and authority um, stance with them at that point. So awesome.